by 150 basis points since January last year. The repo rate stands at 6.5%, its lowest level in more than five years. Banks have passed on a little more than half of this rate cut in the current easing cycle to consumers. Having cut interest rates, now RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan is putting the onus on real estate developers, asking them to reduce prices to encourage more people to buy properties. But is there a room enough for bringing down prices? We are joined by Ramesh Nair, COO, Business and International Director, JLL India, Lalit Kumar Jain, CMD Kumar, Urban Development, and of course, Samir joins us as well with his input. So, gentlemen, I'm going to go to the developer first to ask. The RBI Governor says, I've done my bit. Lalit Kumar Jain, it's up to you and the rest of the developers to bring down prices. Where's the room? Let me return the ball to the Governor. Okay. What Governor can <laughs> do <Flip> the ball. <laughs> in this juncture to unlock the mm. value and then subsequent... Yeah. See, uh, I think RBI can play a major role in at least unlocking the uh, inventory. What has happened is, because the sales are down, people are not getting additional funding to complete projects. So I think it's onus on RBI, how do they support developers to complete the project so that they can be delivered and this unlocking happens. Once the supply increases through this, automatically rates get stabilized. There are few risks uh, ahead of us, which will escalate prices instead of reduce like regulatory bill introduction will crunch the liquidity now with liquidity crunch what you are going to see is uh, lower liquidity to expand business also what you will get is a very limited stock in the market because regulator okay. uh, is really All right. going to be very, very I, I get that point, uh, Lalit Majen. I think, are, I think uh, Mr. Jain, this is something the developers have been saying. You bring in more regulation, you will actually choke the supply pipe. And, and as sales are falling lower, if you don't open the money supply, then you all also are going to see lower supply. I'm not so sure whether I'm buying that point completely. Yes, there's some merit to it. Uh, Ramesh, what do you feel? I mean, Developers say prices are as low as they can get and in fact they're going to get more expensive going forward but clearly sales aren't happening. I know that at every level discounts are being passed so why not just open up and say look we are cutting down prices and just, just bring back that excitement into the market. Manisha at the end of the day uh, we need to realize that uh, every developer is a businessman. He's not uh, here in the business uh, just to keep increasing his price. If there is no demand, we have seen developers reducing their prices. In many parts of the city, we have seen uh, many developers who have actually giving anywhere between 5 to 15 percent discount where there is uh, not much of demand. So that kind of correction has already happened, although our research says that last year prices, the base prices went up uh, 3 percent. If you look at Mumbai city, the pluses, all your flow rises, your preferential views, all this actually add up to around 20% in the city. So developers are not touching the base price in terms of discounts, but they're giving discounts uh, in terms of those all those uh, pluses with various schemes like uh, subvention scheme and things like that. So that is already happening. Developers uh, today, if they need to uh, be profitable, need to create cash flows. So uh, I wouldn't actually agree with uh, the governor. The discounts are already happening. Many developers uh, in the city already offering uh, good okay. deals. This is a good right. time to go uh, uh, negotiate a good deal with the developer. Okay. Why is it that the governor then, I mean, I'm sure that there, there has to be some merit, Samir. It's not that uh, Raghuram Rajan will say something like this without actually having delved into a lot of statistics and facts and figures. No, I, um, I would tend to agree with the, the governor a bit over here because there are prices that have just become unaffordable for the regular buyer or the end user and there are in many many cases uh, fresh land parcels that have got released or the FSIs have got increased which easily bring, allow the developer to bring the prices down but we are facing a very peculiar kind of a challenge uh, out here you see one is that in at least the north uh, and probably in some cases in the west as well the the 
the buyer is just not interested at any price to buy a new project or an under construction property unless it is from a really reputed developer because he has lost the confidence of it ever getting executed that is a mm. bigger challenge than than just a price cut okay so that to so my mind so you say confidence crisis is of confidence exactly. and not so much of pricing absolutely okay this absolutely. is this is really interesting so 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 they are willing to go and pay a premium hmm as long as they are assured they're going to get the property or they are concentrating on buying ready properties and ready properties as we all know are slightly more expensive than properties that are just being launched that's a peculiar problem that is being faced uh, by the developers because their cash flows are just not going to get better with this kind of a situation and that they're not going to be so, able so, to So so Samir are you saying the developers at least really don't have room to cut prices which is what the other two panelists are saying the it, problem it is it has elsewhere. to be very city specific it has to be very micro market specific uh, in cities like mumbai where there are no land parcels available there's no additional fsi coming uh, you cannot cut prices but okay. in the in for example in gurgaon with the new tdr and the new fsi increasing to 3 3.5 around the metro corridors there's a huge benefit that many developers have got and their the fsi that they've got the land prices for that fsi has come down to zero so they can easily bring down the prices of those okay. areas so anyway we've got two experts for mumbai so mumbai uh, i can see i mean come on mr jain you need to smile a little bit more both panelists are agreeing with you that there's very little room to cut prices okay let me come to then another big development which has happened in mumbai and how will that affect prices ramesh over to you first is i mean you know this whole approval process is going online from 15th may there's a lot of excitement about amongst mumbai developers at least the fact that if approvals go online and the cycle is cut shorter of approvals there should be definitely value unlocking or interest costs coming down do you think developers will pass that on to the end buyer will there be a room to cut prices then manisha your first question and second question are interrelated uh, when fadnavis uh, came to power nearly 2 years back uh, there was so much of promise uh, of increasing supply in the city the only way we can reduce prices in the city is increasing supply but what has happened in the last 1 to 2 years is exactly the opposite firstly the confusion on uh, the new dp plan developers every developer is confused what's going to happen land sales are not happening land lots think they're going to get fi developers think uh, even if they get a little more fsa they'll have huge premiums so that's comes to a standstill the second court uh, order preventing uh, new construction from happening that's a double whammy thirdly the market sentiments are bad that's a triple whammy to add to all this now rera is going to come into place so look at what all ways we are trying to stop supply look at the cities where there is huge amount of real estate supply two cities one is hyderabad the other is uh, amdavad huge amount of real estate supply great infrastructure prices highly affordable today you could go to amdavad and or uh, hyderabad and buy something at 4000 rupees that's exactly what mumbai needs we need faster approvals faster uh, uh, approvals the government wants to do anything but every time i talk to a developer he doesn't say it publicly in front of the government but every single developer says it's exactly the same it takes equal or more time today to get an approval and the same uh, issues uh, persist so okay. the government needs to fix infrastructure more than anything else if they need to create more supply in the city where where prices will become more affordable all right lalit kumar jain how hopeful are you that this online process which is proposed from 15th may will actually work what i've heard is that you know officials at the ground level aren't very happy about it i mean a lot of graft money goes out of the system and they're going to make sure that it doesn't work till they're really whipped into action Manisha you must recollect mission transparency was launched by me and this is exactly what we wanted and i am really happy this government is taking lot of initiative and if really uh, it works then it's a fantastic uh, uh, step forward it will definitely result into controlling costs and it will also reduce cost of uh, funding uh, at the end of course this has to start and then we have to see what problems come uh, it is not that uh, immediately next day you will find solutions there will be hurdles because the you still have to have interdepartmental relationship where they have to clear the projects though timelines are given what we have seen at ground level people really don't uh, respond so well uh, within the hierarchy but 
there is a very sincere uh, approach of the uh, chief minister as well as the senior uh, bureaucracy and I am quite hopeful that it will work. Ramesh Nair, Lalit Kumar Jain, thank you so much gentlemen. So the verdict is clear, Mumbai very little room to cut prices currently but there are micro markets, Samir has already pronounced one, Gurgaon. As, okay, I think Ramesh you have a point to make, go ahead. Manisha, three, four things which the RBI governor could have done instead of asking the developers to cut prices. As a country, we are... ran out of time, but go ahead. Yeah, as a country, our banking exposure to real estate is just about $40 billion, uh, uh, which is the commercial real estate loan. And in any market you look at across the world, those are much, much higher numbers. Second is LTVs again of 75 to 80 uh, percent. That can uh, definitely be uh, increased. Look at uh, our default rate of the real estate sector. Most, most uh, uh, research says it's just 2 to 3 percent. Look at the sectors like uh, steel, cement, power, uh, aviation, where I've heard numbers between 16 to 25 percent kind of default rates. So still real estate is always, uh, always a, a bad apple in the uh, economy. Uh, look at bringing something like an ATIB. The government did something during the budget, but make it more, uh, uh, more widespread. So the government can do all these things, bring down the taxes today uh, as per credit data, close to 38% is taxes. De developers pay around 27% in taxes, while the home buyer pays around 11% in taxes. Bring down all these. There are so many things which uh, the RBI can do rather than ask uh, developers to bring down prices because it's a demand supply game and the developer doesn't find demand, he will reduce the prices. Mm. I think you've summed it pretty well, Ramesh. Thanks very much. I think I'm going to sign off on this discussion on that note, I think. And we will probably try and send the RBI governor this link or hope that he's watching this show and implements some of those uh, very, very valid demands. Thank you, gentlemen.